let's get started. First and foremost, there's some key information you're going to have to understand in order to grasp this concept. The first is what the body needs your acid-base balance to be in order to survive. And that's going to be somewhere between 7.35 to 7.45. Now, the perfectly balanced pH is 7.4. So technically anything below that errs on the side of acidosis. And then anything that goes above 7.4 starts making its way towards alkalosis. But when the body is happy is when it's inside that range of 7.35 to 7.45. When it starts going below 7.35 and we get that acidosis, the body starts compensating or activating different mechanisms to bring that pH back up and get it into balance. So that fancy dancy word you've heard, compensation, that's what that means. And we have two basic ways we can do that with our kidneys and they use bicarb or with our lungs and they use CO2. Now, you need to understand both bicarb and CO2. Let's start with bicarb. It is a base. B for bicarb, B for base. I already told you it comes from the kidneys, and that means if we have a problem with our bicarb, our problem is metabolic. Now let's talk CO2. CO2 comes from the lungs. You guys already know that. You breathe it in and out. So if you have a problem with your CO2, you have a problem with the lungs. And that means it's a respiratory problem. CO2, my friends, is an acid. Too much of it, you become acidotic. Not enough of it, and you become alkalotic. So you've got to know your normal values for the pH, CO2, and that bicarb. You'll see bicarb abbreviated as HCO3. A normal CO2, 35 to 45. pH, you know that survival range, 7.35 to 7.45. And that bicarb, 22 to 28. Now, the three steps you'll need to be taking to get that ABG interpretation right every single time is step one, is it acidotic or alkalotic? I like to paraphrase this as kind of which way is this party going? Are we going to the left and becoming acidotic? Or are we going to the right and becoming alkalotic? Step two, is it metabolic or respiratory? Who's causing our problem? Is bicarb the party pooper and therefore it's a metabolic problem? Or is CO2 the party pooper and therefore it's a respiratory problem? And then lastly, is this a compensated or uncompensated ABG? Do we have a friend trying to help us out and save the day here? And we'll get to exactly what I mean by that. So step one, are we acidotic or alkalotic? This, my friends, is the easiest place to start because all you need to do is look at that pH. As I said, 7.4 is a perfectly balanced neutral pH. Anything to the left of that is going to err on the side of acidosis. So this is when the party is going over to the acidotic side of this scale. If the party is going over to the right, however, going above 7.4, it's becoming a little bit alkalotic. So let's practice together. Here we have a pH of 7.23, a CO2 of 45, and a bicarb of 22. What do you think, acidotic or alkalotic? That pH is 7.23. It is acidotic. It is to the left or less than 7.4. Anything less than that perfectly balanced 7.4, acidotic. Let's try another one together. That pH is now 7.62. What do you think? Is it acidotic or alkalotic? Which way is this party going? A pH of 7.62? That is greater than 7.4. It's to the right. This party is going to the alkalotic side of this scale. Absolutely. Let's try one 
more together. Now we have a pH of 7.43 with a CO2 of 51 and a bicarb of 42. What do you think about this pH of 7.43? I know some of you are telling me, Morgan, that's within that survival range. That's a normal pH, 7.35 to 7.45, right? How am I supposed to decide acidotic or alkalotic? Well, just remember, 7.4, that's a perfectly balanced pH. Is it to the left or to the right? Which way is this party going? This party is going to the right. This is to the alkalotic side. This one's just compensated. So now you know how to find out if it's acidotic or alkalotic. You guys are ready for step two. Who is the party pooper? We know which direction we're going. We have to figure out who's causing that problem. And we have two candidates. It's either going to be our CO2 and therefore a respiratory problem, or it's going to be our bicarb and therefore a metabolic problem. So we're going to play a little bit of a matching game. I'm going to complete step one and figure out if it's acidotic or alkalotic. I'm then going to figure out if my CO2 matches up with that pH or if my bicarb matches up with that pH. And I'll have my answer. You can basically follow this little flow chart. Let's say that we've just completed step one and the party is going towards that acidotic side. So I go and check out my CO2. I'm going to figure out if that CO2 is the party pooper. I know that CO2 is an acid. So look right over here. If my pH is towards that acidotic side, less than 7.35, I'm going to need a lot of extra CO2, a lot of extra acid to cause that pH to go down and become acidotic. So if my pH is high, it's causing an acidosis. My CO2 is the party pooper. It's caused this problem and I have a respiratory acidosis. Things that cause this are respiratory problems where I retain too much carbon dioxide. Anytime I'm hypoventilating, COPD, asthma, maybe I've overdosed or I'm in pain and taking really shallow breaths. On the other hand, if I found out that my pH was really high, my party was going towards the right and this alkalotic side of the spectrum, if I looked down at my CO2 and saw that I didn't have a whole lot of it, not a lot of acid, it could cause my pH to go up. And then my CO2 was once again the party pooper. It caused that party to go towards the right side of this scale. Not a lot of acid, sending that pH up. That respiratory alkalosis can be caused anytime I'm getting rid of a lot of CO2. So maybe I'm having a panic attack. And instead of holding my breath, I'm breathing out all that extra CO2 and getting rid of it. Now, if I've examined my pH, I've determined I'm having an alkalosis, I look at my CO2 and in fact, it is not the party pooper. Now I have to turn my attention to my other potential candidate. Maybe my bicarb is the party pooper. When I examine my sodium bicarb, I notice that, hmm, bicarb is a base. So extra base, an increase in my bicarb, can cause my pH to go up and cause it to become alkalotic, sending it towards the right, making this party become alkalotic. Things that cause this, this metabolic alkalosis, are anything that cause a retention of sodium bicarb, antacids, as well as vomiting when I lose a lot of stomach acid. My stomach has all that hydrochloric acid. If I get rid of that, I can have a metabolic alkalosis. Now on the flip side, if I look at my pH and it's acidotic, CO2 is not the culprit, so I go and examine my bicarb. If I've got a really low amount of base, not a lot of base, low base can cause me to become acidotic. 
if bicarb is the culprit for an acidotic pH, well, when bicarb is the party pooper, we know it's a metabolic problem. That is a metabolic acidosis. Causes here are renal disease. My kidneys aren't making enough bicarb. Not enough bicarb, not enough base. I become acidotic. Diarrhea, losing a lot of bicarb from that lower GI tract. Let's practice together and see if we can identify the culprit here and practice step two. I have a pH of 7.23, a CO2 of 62, and a bicarb of 22. Now, you have to do step one first. So which way is this pH going? That pH of 723, it's headed to the left. You guys know that that is acidotic. So now turn your attention to step through. Who is the party pooper? Is the CO2 causing your problem or is the bicarb causing your problem? All right, you've got CO2, that's your acid, and you've got bicarb, that's your base. All right, B for bicarb, B for base, that's your metabolic component. CO2 is your acid, that's your respiratory component. So if it's a CO2 problem, it's a respiratory problem. If it's a bicarb problem, it's a metabolic problem. Who's the party pooper here? Who are we going to blame this on? It's the CO2. We've got a ton of acid that matches up with step one, an acidotic pH. We therefore have a respiratory acidosis. Let's try one more together. Now we have a pH of 7.62. The CO2 is 49 and the bicarb is 31. All right, so we've got to do step one. Which way is this party going? Take a look at that pH. Is it left or right of 7.4? All right, this one's headed the other way to the right. It's alkalotic. So check out your CO2 and your bicarb. Which one is the party pooper? Play your matching game. Is the CO2 sending it to the right or is the bicarb sending it to the right? This time it's the bicarb. We've got too much base, a high amount of base. This is a metabolic alkalosis. Very good. Now you're ready for the final step. Step three, is this compensated or uncompensated? For this very last piece of the puzzle, we have to turn our attention not to the party pooper, but what its friend is doing. So we've determined if it's acidotic or alkalotic, which direction is this party going, and we have figured out whose fault it is. So we know if the CO2 or the bicarb is causing the problem. Now look at the other component. So for example, if the CO2 was causing the problem, turn your attention to the bicarb. What is the bicarb doing? If the bicarb is trying to fix the problem, this is a compensated ABG. The friend is trying to help its little party pooper out. It's trying to do a good thing and get that ABG back within the normal limits. If it's not helping its friend out though, that's an uncompensated ABG. Now, lastly, if they ask you if that is a fully or partially compensated ABG, all you need to do is look at that pH. If the little friend has helped compensate all the way and that pH is back to normal, they've done their job and they have fully compensated the ABG. The pH is back to normal. But if they're still working on it, then the pH is abnormal and it's just a partially compensated ABG. So in summary, your three steps to get the ABG interpretation right every time are step one, acidotic or alkalotic. Look at that pH. 7.4 is perfect. 
if the party is going to the left less than 7.4, that is acidotic. Greater than 7.4 to the right side of this scale is alkalotic. Once you know which direction it's going, go to step two and figure out whose fault it is. Who's the party pooper here? Is it bicarb? That's a metabolic problem. Or is it CO2? That's a respiratory problem. Once you know whose fault it is, turn your attention to their friend, step three, and see if they're helping. If they are helping, it's compensated. If they're not, it's uncompensated. Partial versus full, just look at that pH. It's fully compensated if we've got a normal pH and partially if that pH is still abnormal. Now, don't forget, CO2, it comes from the lungs. So if you've got a CO2 problems, it's respiratory. CO2 is an acid. So higher CO2 brings your pH down, all right? That's why those numbers here are switched like they are. Bicarb is a base, B for bicarb, B for base. It comes from the kidneys, so if you've got a bicarb problem, it is metabolic. If this lecture was helpful for you, we've got plenty more where that came from. Head over to archerreview.com and subscribe to one of our many affordable packages to study for nursing school, the NCLEX, and beyond. We'll see you there, future nurses.